Hello everyone. Today we will discuss should people with a terminal illness be granted the autonomy to choose euthanasia? But first, let's clarify what is terminal and what we view as an illness. Based on Wikipedia, a terminal illness indicates a disease that will progress until death with near absolute certainty, regardless of treatment. A patient who has such an illness may be referred to a terminal patient, terminally ill, or simply terminal. There is no standardized life expectancy for a patient to be considered terminal, although it is generally months or less. The definition of illness is a disease or period of sickness may be treatable, not expected to be resulted in death. ALS or aphytrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as Lucari's disease, is an example of a terminal illness. ALS attacks neurons in the brain. As the neurons die, the brain loses the ability to send signals and muscle atrophy for the lack of use. ALS typically starts in one part of the body, usually the dominant hand or foot, and moves on to other muscle groups. Eventually, the patient loses all movement, including the ability to speak or swallow. It's good to point that ALS is not hereditary because 90% of the cases occur without family history. There is no cure for ALS and the life expectancy is between 2 to 5 years with a $250,000 out of pocket expense. This is what the future of a person with a disease with ALS looks like. We all are familiar with Stephen Hawking's life. When a person is diagnosed with a terminal illness, the burden can fall onto not only the patient, but also the family. The ALS disease process is lengthy and often will bring the patient and the family suffering. The case I study that I would like to concentrate on today is about Fred Nelligan. Fred loved the outdoors. He participated in marathons and many outdoors activities. His favorite activity was to go climbing with his wife and two dogs. He was diagnosed with ALS at age 60. After his diagnosis in November in 2013, Fred Nelligan set a plan in motion to gather a group of trusted friends, including his wife, Julie, to help him answer the questions surrounding when to die. After making the decision to use the Death with Dignity Act. As Fred's disease progressed, he dropped from 180 pounds to 140 pounds and began using feeding tubes to maintain his weight. He also lost the ability to use his arm or grasp or hug the people he loved. He had a harder time chewing, swallowing, and even speaking. Since 1997, the Oregon Death Identity Ad, or DWDA, has allowed terminal ill people to write to end their life due to a terminal illness. Oregonians must meet specific qualifications to end their life through the voluntary self-administration of a little dose of medication which is prescribed by some doctors. As of January of this year, 168 people have died from ingesting prescribed medications. So, let's compare the theology and science points of view. What is the issue? In theology, God is the author and giver of life. 
scripture say that God breathed his breath onto human's life. Science concentrated on the ethics point of view, talking about the controversy to respect autonomy, and at the same time, the physicians made a note to do no harm. Let's talk about theological views for a little bit. End of life decisions making has encountered religious arguments that are often used to oppose euthanasia and physician assisted suicide. Religious articulations argue that every human life, whether healthy or ill, bedridden, conscious or unconscious, is worth living. Religious articulation of intrinsic human dignity reject and of life decisions that end at speeding the dying process, arguing that only God disposes life. Choosing euthanasia rejects God's gift of life. We can look at the Bible a few subjects that have committed suicide, like Ahitophel, Judas, and Samson. But will you go to hell if you commit suicide? Yes, the Bible treats life as a divine gift and something humans are to value and respect. No human have the right to take his own life or the life of another. Yes, suicide is a terrible tragedy, a sin even, but it does not negate the Lord's act of redemption and mercy. A scientific view. The most important thing about euthanasia is not that itself. It's knowing that as a human being, you have the choice, the possibility, and the freedom. These are examples of the medications that are used for euthanasia. Secobarbital, DDMP, compound, which is made of diazepam, dioxin, morphine sulfate, and propanolol. You can see the difference between 2017 numbers and 2018 numbers in this graph. A total of 103 patients Physicians wrote 249 prescriptions during the year 2018. Secobarbital used 27, uh, DDMP 59. There is a difference between the prescription reading and the ones used because once the prescription is given, the patient can use it at any time they decide. That could be days, months, or years. A liberal articulation of autonomy implies that patients have the right to make decisions that do not take into account the preference of any other person. A patient has the right to request an end-of-life solution that does not take into account any other further ethical consideration. And this is where the dilemma with the autonomy of the patient and the oath that doctor has given when they graduated to do no harm comes into effect. My questions are, are the people who committed suicide in the Bible in heaven today, or are they awaiting judgment? Another question, by committing suicide, does it mean that God is not your savior? Lastly, is there a difference between euthanasia and giving a patient high doses of morphine when they are in hospice during their final hours? This is a link of a documentary about how to die in Oregon, and it's also a link about a short documentary of Fred talking about his final days and his decision. Fred Nelligan chose to end his life on November 2014. 
he was surrounded by his friends, his lovely wife, under the hospice care, surrounded by his inner circle at age 51. Thank you.